Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is Richard with Making Something From Nothing. And today we're going to be doing a lathe project. I'm doing some upgrades on the lathe and one thing that is really aggravating and anybody that has a tool post like this with just a nut on the top knows the problem is every time you adjust your tool post you have to reach for a wrench and go ahead and tighten it up. And I'm just tired of doing that. So what I'm going to do is I have some materials around the shop uh, it's all scrap. Uh, we're going to make something from nothing today. And what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, an extremely large nut, uh, probably about this tall. And we're going to go ahead and install a handle in it. So rather than using a wrench to tighten up the tool post every time or loosen it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make me a large nut with a handle to where I could just go ahead and cinch it closed. So if you have a tool post like this and you like to make uh, adjustments to your tool post in seconds rather than you know 30 seconds or a minute uh, stick around because we're going to go ahead and make a really nice one out of scrap materials laying around the shop the materials that we're going to use to make something out of nothing today is pretty simple uh, I do have some one inch bar but I'd really like this uh, big nut that I make to be a little bit bigger so the only stock I had around was this uh, big old bolt and I had a little trouble parting it off, so I'm going to probably just use the angle grinder. But we're going to go ahead and cut us a length of that. I've got some half inch round stock. Uh, I found this over in the scrap bin. Uh, looks to be a, a nice heavy duty washer, so we're going to utilize that. And some 6061 T6 aluminum to go ahead and make the handle. Okay, so we got about two and a quarter inches worth of this uh, bolt. So we're going to go ahead and chuck this up in the lathe and square off these ends. Now the bolt running through the Aloris tool post is half 13, so we're going to go ahead and drill this out 7 16 which is the drill size for a half 13 tap. So I put a nice chamfer on both the inside and the outside and we'll go ahead and tap it next. Okay, so let's do a little test fit up. We're going to use this uh, big old washer because the threads on this weren't cut deep enough to take the whole bolt. And plus this washer is the same size as this boss right here. So we're going to get some nice uh, gripping power right there. And that looks good. Uh, this washer is in uh, kind of bad shape, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and chuck that up, uh, face both sides, and probably put a little bevel on this to go ahead and match up with the bottom of that guy. So we'll do that next. Now it's going to be impossible to go ahead and put this in here and have it running perfectly true. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, two pieces of uh, tool steel, and we're going to go ahead and place that guy in there. Put it firmly up against the tool steel and cinch it down. Now I've got my washer sticking out just a little bit so I could face it and we'll pop these guys out and we'll see how true she runs. So I flip the part around and I'm just repeating the same procedure over on this side to get it faced off. Now since this washer is just something I found over in the uh, scrap pile, uh, the bore is a little bit bigger 
than the half inch 13 bolt that goes through the uh, tool post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bore it out uh, to you know just a diameter and then I'm going to go ahead and make an aluminum uh, bushing uh, so this way this thing isn't fitting all wonky on the uh, on the bolt and running off center. And I'll make me a bushing with a half inch hole to slip over the, the bolt. So I mix up a little five minute epoxy and drop the bushing in place. I'll let this thing sit overnight and then tomorrow face off the extra glue and aluminum. It was just the right thing to do to make the, uh, the washer fit the bolt a little bit better. So the facing operation turned up a nasty burr on the aluminum bushing. So I go ahead and drill it out and put a nice chamfer on it to give it a finished look. Nice. Well when I drill the hole for the handle, I want to make sure I don't intersect this hole. So I'm taking a measurement and I'm going to transfer it to the outside using a threading tool and put a permanent mark that I know is going to be my safe zone for drilling later. Now the way I'm going to determine placement of this handle is I've got this screw down to where the tool post is relatively tight. I know this handle goes from about 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock and I'd like my handle uh, to maybe follow the same kind of path. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and mark the top of this about uh, 2 o'clock-ish. And this way when I go ahead and tighten this nut, my handle is going to come around this way to my right, uh, approximately about the same amount as this one here. Now ideally I'd like to have an angled handle like you see this one angling up. Uh, I'd like mine to follow the same kind of trajectory, but uh, I don't have a milling machine, so uh, that idea is kind of out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill straight in, and if I have to bend my shaft that the handle gets attached to to match this angle, that's probably the route I'm going to go. It's just the easiest way for me to do it. So I extended my mark down the side and I need to figure out where my half inch handle is going to go. So I'm going to use this drill bit that is a half inch and I want to stay away from that little score line we put in earlier. You could tell from the outside the way this is turned, this outer surface of about a quarter inch uh, that appears to be some pretty hard stuff the way it was cutting. So drilling this is actually going to be a problem, but I think I have a solution for that. So while the piece of bolt cools down, I figured I'd go ahead and clean up the outside of this washer and give it a nice clean finished look. Well overall the, the big old thick washer came out pretty nice. Uh, bushing looks good. The outside's cleaned up nice. Uh, at least it doesn't look ugly. So we'll move on to the next step. Well I'll tell you what, even after hitting it with the oxy set, uh, this metal is still extremely tough. I don't know what they make these things from, but uh, I did get the hole drilled. I uh, tried using a countersink, but uh, that didn't fare too well. So I need to go ahead and tap this, and I figured my best chance of tapping this thing straight into this uh, extremely hard metal, if I could even do it, is going to be in the lathe. So let me show you how I'm going to go ahead and set this up in a three-jaw chuck uh, to go ahead and tap it. So I drilled this hole with a 7 16 So I've got it chucked up over here in the tailstock. And I'm just going to go ahead and place this directly onto the drill bit. And I'm going to go ahead and run this guy 
right in against the chuck so it's square and then tighten down the chuck but this is in line with the spindle and I'm going to go ahead and put the tap in the drill chuck and I should be right in line to go ahead and tap so that's how I'm going to do it if I did this by hand I'd probably end up screwing it up so I'm going to go ahead and hit that with some oil I've got it uh, in back here so the spindle is locked and uh, we're going to try tapping it give it plenty of oil put some pressure on the tap Okay, we're all the way at the bottom, and now I'm starting to understand why they call these manual lathes. So I cut off a length of the half inch bar, I'm going to thread each side half 13, and I'm going to highly polish this and the two inch nut that we turned down earlier to finish the project. Well, I think where we left off, I was threading the rod here, and all the parts are pretty much complete. The only thing I didn't get filmed was making this uh, aluminum handle. Pretty basic stuff. Just a little 45 here, and uh, threaded it half 13. Also, off camera, I went ahead and polished up our base piece, as well as our rod, and our washer. And went ahead and treated it with the propane torch, brought them up to about... Uh, approximately 540 degrees and that's what gave us this really nice color and I think it turned out really sharp it's a kind of straw color bluish purplish really gives a nice look so I went ahead and did that for all three parts and it's just a matter of reassembling it and putting it on the tool post and uh, see how good it works and if you'll notice in the background I also have uh, another similar setup, and this is something that I made for the tailstock. I had to use a nut and a washer for the tailstock as well, and it just got to be a pain in the butt using a wrench on the tailstock and using a wrench on the tool post. So that's why I went ahead and made these, and I really recommend anybody that has nuts on their tailstock or their tool post uh, to go ahead and do a project like this. So let's go ahead and put it together take a look and see how good it works now all these parts I'm going to go ahead and probably epoxy or JB weld or do something but uh, let's go ahead and screw this guy into our base stick our washer on it's a nice tight fit with that bushing And it stops right around 2 o'clock is where it starts to cinch up. And that's exactly what I was looking for. So we'll go ahead and put our handle on. So it'll stop around 2 o'clock. And it cinches down tight right at 3 o'clock. And that is tight. That's as tight as really I need to, to pull that. And I matched the angle on the existing handle on the Alorus pretty well. Uh, did that first shot. I was kind of surprised, but uh, I think that looks pretty good. So overall, it's a really nice project. And I'm going to put my three-quarter wrench back in the toolbox where it belongs. And I'm really going to enjoy this because if I need to go ahead and adjust the tool post, I could do it in seconds and lock it back down and it's not going anywhere so I'll give you a quick look at the one for the tailstock that one was a little bit more involved it involved bending some custom angles on this piece for the tailstock one to give me a little bit more travel since it was a tight working area in the tailstock so we'll take a quick look at that but this is the project for the tool post I'm not really sure what to call it but it works well and I highly recommend 
if you have a nut on top of your tool post, go ahead and make one of these. And I made this a little bit on the tall side, just to give me a little clearance over here so I'm not busting knuckles as I'm um, loosening or tightening any of these handles. I tried to get you in here behind the tailstock to take a look at it, so hopefully my hand's not going to be in the way. This piece here just threads onto our bolt. If I could find it without seeing it. Okay, so I've got my handle started on. But this one tightens down very firmly right there. So my travel on this thing goes from here when I'm loose and to tighten it down I went ahead and put this 45 degree bend in it so this way the bar will clear this and give me extra travel to come all the way back to right there. From here to here gives me enough pressure on the tailstock to lock it down. Well, prior to these two projects, it was a major ordeal moving the tailstock or adjusting the tool post without uh, digging around for wrenches. But now I could just go ahead and swing that, move that, move that, and pull that, and I'm done. A matter of seconds. So this is Richard from Making Something From Nothing. I hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, leave me a comment down below, hit that like button, and as always, thanks for subscribing.